Hello and welcome to One on One with Jane. I'm your host, and today I have Marguerite Buck on my show. She's going to cover the dual of life as an entertainer and educator. Welcome. Yeah, hi Jane. Thank you. It's so good to be back, and, and, and I always enjoy hanging out with you. Thanks for having me on your show. You're welcome. I'm your host, and today I have Marguerite Buck on. Again on my show, she's going to speak about the dual life of entertaining and educating. Action. Hello, welcome to One on One with Jane. I'm your host. And today, I have Marguerite Bacow again on my show. She's going to speak about the dual life of entertaining and educating. That's her destiny. So what actually got you into meditation at the age of 13? Well, I questioned the religion um, as a child because I was having these experiences, had these gifts of sensing things uh, in my world as a child. And so a lot of what I was sensing and what people were saying were not matching up. So I always had, I was asking, and I think that's why I ended up giving this answer, this direction. I was. I realized there was something happening inside of me, and particularly in my brain, because I could feel biochemically that what I thought had an effect on my body. And not only that, you know, on these other mystical levels, multi-sensory levels, I observed, say like when I was lying down on the beach with my girlfriends, I would experiment, I would have a uplifting thought and I could see like the photons, the light within myself expand and I thought, is this real? And so then I would switch to a well, you know, a downer thought and it would just you'll see this murkiness happen. So I started exploring back and forth. I could see how my thoughts affected my biochemistry and so there was this science thing and I was questioning how does this work? I want to know about the part of my brain. And so it was shortly after that, I put that question out into the universe. I was at my grandmother's house and she was studying psychology in college. And so I was a teenager there sitting there bored. And of course, the last place you want to be is with the dorky grown ups. And I'm thumbing through this magazine. And I see an ad for meditation. And it had things like bullet points. Like, do you want to feel peaceful? Do you want to feel harmony, balance? And I thought, yes. And I could just feel it. It was like with Cupid sending an arrow. And I just got shot in the heart. I thought, that's it. I want that. And so I started getting these lessons in the mail. They came, I think, every two weeks, maybe every week, every two weeks. And so I would shut my door, my mom and dad, they respected that. Uh, as a teenager, I was not getting in trouble. I was focused in, I got in trouble later, but I was focused <laughs> on this practice of meditation. And sure enough, I got my, my answer. Yeah, because these lessons, they wove together these practices, the science of it, along with the, the mystical. So combined, and so I was having these biochemical experiences with energy and prana expanding, and I was just this weird teenager. And but I just knew it. it was just part of my destiny. This is meant for me, and it always has been. It never went away. And so at the same time, I come from a showbiz family, and so singing and dancing, and acting, performing was natural. And we were put in dance classes. We always went out to see musicals and even orchestra music as a child. So I still, I kind of had that overlap happening, but I never thought about doing anything in showbiz. It was just part of my life. I lived in LA. Hollywood scene was just part of the, the environment there. And so that's how I got into the meditation. I actually look up to you a lot. Let me tell you why. I have a hard time relaxing. And I've been trying to meditate. And every time I meditate, thoughts start hitting my mind while I'm trying to relax. 
So I only sleep four or five hours a night. I'm lucky if I sleep six. And sometimes I'm up like uh, a lot of hours before falling asleep. So lately I've been trying to meditate. But as soon as I lay my head down to the pillow, I've been writing songs. You know, lyrics and stuff. And like everything is like a comedy, romance, drama. Hey, Jamie, I would like to address what you just shared with me. Yeah, and oh, by the way, thank you again for having me on your show. You're I, mean, welcome. I, I really admire a lot about you, too, your prolific creativity. Uh, and you're so original. Thank you. So you, you mentioned that, um, yeah, you're welcome. So, so you mentioned having a hard time going to sleep is, is, is because of stress or because of this creativity, it sounds like. It keeps you up with the writing songs and comedy. Mm -hmm. Usually I sleep and then after at a certain time I'm up um, sometimes half a night writing or sometimes like for example within an hour I could write three to five songs or more it just depends and I've been writing on my phone and I have classical music hitting uh, rainstorm music is making me write like those kind of like uh, the, 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 the instrumental beats that make someone sleep inspires me to write mm -hmm. oh well I, I totally sympathize with you or really empathize because the, the, the create creative spirit is 24 7 I mean it's not like the creative muse shuts down at 9 p.m. bedtime every night the creativity is 24 7 so yeah I have to make a designated time to say okay well my body lets me know too if I'm tired so um, but yeah I that calmness thank you for acknowledging that I do practice everything possible to maintain this continuity of calmness and that's what the master teachers that I've studied with they were so repetitious about that continuity instead of this up and down emotional roller coaster that mankind tends to put each other on and it's not necessary so yeah and, and to to do the, the breathing and these practices it's it's a discipline it's just a daily discipline and I don't let myself wallow in anxiety do meditation and I veered off away from it and I became shallow I had my moments of being really shallow <laughs> you know I don't want to be a deep spiritual person I just want to be a shallow person that would try to just be shallow in, of the world and I miss that, the keenness, the calmness, this sensing, feeling everything so deeply. So every time I ventured away, I'd come back, I'd go, okay, now I'm in it stronger. Every time I came back, I'm in it stronger. And I, I'm just completely committed to the inner world, feeling that calmness and peace from within, above everything. So that, that's how the meditation started. Um, and stuck, I stuck with it, and I had other teachers. I was this weird kid. I would be in these classes with a couple old people who were like from 30 and up. Because <laughs> I was in these other classes from age 15 to 28 studying. And um, so when I graduated from high school, you know, the natural thing, everybody says, go to college, go to college. So I didn't know what I wanted to study, so I just chose kind of randomly criminal law as the major and dance as a minor and I loved the law library but I know me that I would not have the patience to endure dragged out court cases I'm the kind of person if there's an issue I want to solve it I look for the solution the right way so uh, but that 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 Yes, sir. It has served me learning how to read documents and contracts. I like that Case, about you. Uh, you know, the law library, reading cases, and boy, you learn about that crazy ass stuff people do. So that, that's good to face reality. That's part of our world, the crazy stuff people do. Um, so then I thought, well, what am I going to do? And then uh, I, I got led to, but well, I won't go into all the details, said, you know what, just try it. Go to an acting class. And sure enough, when I went to Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, I saved up some money 
I took, started taking classes there at the um, dramatic acting and also uh, musical comedy. Suzanne, Susan Strasberg, Lee Strasberg's wife, says, hey, I suggest you try this class. And so she put me with this teacher named Jeannie Robbins. Jeannie Robbins was, uh, I learned so much from that lady. She could sing in a variety of languages, and she would get so emotionally connected to the music. And this lady, she really drew me out. She, because I was super shy, painfully shy. I know that feeling. Yeah. So I know a lot of us performers are we're actually introverts, and then we get on stage, and then we get out and shine. But so, so there I was, and I was bitten by that bug. I was like, oh my God, I couldn't wait. I, I wanted to get on stage immediately. Once this woman, Jeannie Robbins, she helped me to get out of my inhibitions by connecting genuinely the emotion of the character, not just the lyrics, not just empty words. Feel the character first and let the voice you're singing come from the character. So, I've been fortunate that the, the teaching um, is super satisfying and, you know, it's, it pays the bills, too, between things. Um, so what happened then at uh, Lee Strasberg, uh, at, at some point I couldn't afford to go anymore. But I, I defied their policy. They really wanted people to study there for at least two years before you went out on stage and performed. I couldn't wait. I started auditioning immediately, like I think within a, before a year, uh, and started getting little parts in uh, theater, and I loved rock musicals especially, and so when I, I couldn't afford to go continue at Lee Strasberg, I was so heartbroken. And then one time I went to just meet up with a friend who was who was there. We rendezvous and to, to chat. And Jeannie Robbins saw me at the at the school, and she said, "Marguerite, where have you been?" And I said, "Jeannie, I, I can't afford to be here to come anymore." She said, "You are still in my class." I said, "No." And so I realized what she was doing giving me a gift. She brought her roll book to me and it had my name on it for a year. It gave me a year free. And so that was such a boost to have her believe in me so much that she snuck me in there for another year. Oh, free. that's good. You know what? They say it's all who you know. So. Oh, yeah, there is a lot of that. Like, you just well, right, there's right timing, and you hear that a lot, about a lot of these people um, in, in film and TV, they talk about right timing, right timing, the right people at the right time, and uh, I have to tell you, though, um, the, the method and technique that I learned there, once I got on stage, it didn't really do me that much good, because I ended up just being present. I had the material down, and I would focus in on the person in front of me and as the character, uh, because the, the method acting is for sure, sure. It, it has its place. But I found that the Meisner, um, when I read about Meisner, I was like, oh, you know, that that works for me. Um, I think even better. Um, but each situation, as you know, because you've, you've done some comedy on stage, and you go with the flow. If you have the material... But you never know who's going to show up, how people are going to respond, right? But um, what got you into Buns of Steel International and it got distributed? Oh, right. Well, yeah, so what happened, let me segue to that. Okay, so I performed, I was in bands, and and then I was almost kind of like A-list. Um, I had some connections that got me on to... Uh, Family ties, way back in the day, the Michael J. Fox, because I had this one dance teacher. Oh, yeah, I got I ended up getting some free dance lessons, too. So I had this really cool boss who bought a, um, a pass to the dance studio down the street, and I could take 
all the dance classes I wanted for free. So I got acting for free, I got dancing for free, and I didn't realize this till later that, you know, how blessed I was. Um, so I performed in, in, in these different shows, and then I, I kind of tired of the, the drama, because I had my meditation was about continuity of peace. Then you go into these egos and jealousy and competition and cutthroat, whatnot. In a couple of the shows, everybody was really cool and super supportive. But that wasn't always the case. I just got fed up. Uh, I was at the point where I could have gone to Broadway, but I thought, no, I don't really like the fast pace of New York. And so I dropped out of the whole scene, and I was heartbroken. But I didn't feel the desire to perform anymore, and it flipped me out. And so that's when I had this, my first identity crisis. I've had two, but this was the first identity crisis. I had like, what happened? I have this desire to perform, and now it's gone. The gong show, and he was always writing the songs and stuff and nonstop, and when you, when you give up on your dream, you die more than halfway. Oh, well put. So, yeah, you, if you witness that with your dad, you know, and that actually ties in with the thing that I teach, you know, the meditation and the soul satisfaction program that I develop is to help people get in tune with what they want to express. Yeah, so you, you're not dead or dying, like you said, like your dad, feeling like that. Um, so that year, what I learned was that actor, being an actor is not who I am. Being a secretary is not who I am. All these odd jobs I did, being a serving a Taco Bell. That's not who I am. So I learned that not to be attached to identities. So that was really good. So I threw my hand up and I said, okay, I'm not feeling it to do this right now. Get me out, but okay, I'll be open to where life is sending me. And so around that time, a friend kept saying, you should be teaching yoga because he saw how passionate I was about it, studying the science and the discipline I had and my enthusiasm for it. And I thought, nah, who's gonna, you know, pay me to roll around on the floor, tell people to breathe and stretch. Who's gonna pay me? Because the yoga was not big at that time. But he kept nagging me and nagging me. I said, okay, I'll look into it. So I found a teacher I resonated with and I signed up for a certification course and I immediately got a business card after I, I don't, I don't think I even, feel, no, I didn't even finish that, the certification course. I realized that I knew just as much as this teacher who was training me and I knew even more about some things than him. So. He didn't like that, that I went out there, but ahead of time. But immediately the doors opened. I got a job teaching for a retirement home. Stiff old people, and they got, they got a lot out of it. But I, And then the doors just opened. So here's how I got to the buns of steel. Right? So I'm all of a sudden the doors are opening. I'm teaching all around LA at these you know, big shot studios. And like I said, yoga was not that big. And one class at a, a, a big shot gym, I took over, the, the teacher would laugh, and there were only five, four or five people the first couple of classes I taught there. And within a month, Jane, that class was wall to wall, 50 people in that room. So I realized, oh, I've got something to give here that, in the way I'm imparting it, people were taking it in. At that time, it was just flyers, because I know I had a guest speaker from my art club called the Animation Network Club, and he was from California, and he came from flyers, and uh, I actually read an article on him, and I kept in touch with him for six months. His name was Ken Southworth. He worked for Disney, Warren Brothers, and all the major studios. And it was 1995 when I had him come to my, um, I was young, I started like an art club. Um, 
for like uh, five years, and he was my first guest speaker from California. He worked for Disney, Warner Brothers, and all the major studios. I was so, it was flyers that brought people in, and I filled up the whole room, you know. Now it's just right. social media, yeah. Flyers. That was the guerrilla marketing back then, the flyers, not the online. It's like, I don't know how you got in here, but... So I just say it's like destiny, like, and I think it's the case for everybody when you stay relaxed and you're not stuck on where you think you should be and try to force things, you just take a breath and where's life taking me? You know, it doesn't mean you get lazy, doors open and then you got to work and train. Like I, So what happened is this class there just grew and grew wall to wall people, this big shot studio. So when Buns of Steel, they saw that the mind-body business was taken off, they wanted to do a yoga video. So apparently the, the, the scouts from Paramount Studios, the producer was from there, uh, Andrea Ambandos, and she called around, they had scouts look around LA for a yoga teacher they felt would be suitable for Buns of Steel Yoga. And so I was referred, uh, they heard about me, and, um, but meanwhile, here's another mystical part, you know, because I meditate and I, I receive information about my life ahead of time, and I kept getting this vision of doing a yoga video. And I was like, what are you nuts, God? I've done that, I've said that quite a few times, like, what are you nuts, God? <laughs> I don't know anything about producing a video, but it kept persisting. People, so that's what's coming up, Jane. And then people started coming up to me and saying, you should do a yoga video, you should do a yoga video. And I said, okay, I'm getting this message. I'll just start visualizing, affirming, and I put together a prayer, and I have it to this day. And I read this prayer every day about how this video, my future video, would be a benefit to people, increase their well-being. And I put on my vision board, I had like, it was a Jane Fonda, like little pictures from ads from Target, like these exercise videos, um, what is her name, Austin, I, these different people. Oh, I know, I know you're talking about because I, I, I bought a lot of uh, videos, VHS, VHS ones before, DVDs to learn to by myself you know just to do it alone you know because i was always motivated so i bought those before right well and that's motivation there's some people are too lazy to even pop that thing in the it was the vh what do you call it, the vcr back then yep <laughs> so um so every day for about two months i kept looking at these videos of other people and reading my prayer and then two months later, I got the call from Paramount Studios that, oh, this is the vision coming true. And next thing you know, I'm driving into the Paramount lot. My name is at the gate. I go in, I meet Andrea Ambandos and get a load of this. <laughs> I actually had to like show her my buns. Now, not, not, not naked. But she, you know, I stood up, I had on jeans. It just turned around. I guess she wanted to see if I was in good shape or not. And so it's the bonds that qualified me. Really, like, who do you know and how your personality is? Because I don't want to mention any names. I have a business partner behind my work, and he has connections for distribution too, for other things. Not for a podcast or anything like that, for, for like another project. That's why I'm trying to get myself better with puppets. Because um, he has a puppet idea, you know. It's um, one is kind of comedic and one is kind of educational. Well, I'm sticking to the educational stuff. He wants to do comedic and dra dramatic stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, that material you put together with your puppet Josh, it's hilarious. It's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I saw I saw some of your gigs. You had some videos from uh, flappers well you you really took command of that state uh, comedians some of them are kind of homeless and they're like in the streets until they make it you know um that's what i heard yeah oh a lot of them there's 
they're couch surfers. And that's why I'm so grateful that, you know, I've had these other ways, sources of income, uh, especially, you know, teaching like USD and workshops. And, um, you know, I make, you know, I put myself out there. I let people know what I do. But yeah, I don't like that financial pressure or, yeah, I like financial freedom, throat, whatnot. A couple of shows, everybody was really cool and super supportive. Welcome to One on One with Jane. I'm your host, and today I have Marguerite Baca again on my show. She's going to cover the dual life of entertaining, and she's an educator as well. Thank you for being a part of it. Hi, Jane. Thank you for inviting me again. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you. Thank you. You're welcome anytime.